please note that the master bus and the mix bus are not the same channel. The master bus is the stereo out of your entire project. Setting up a mix bus is just a matter of creating a group track where you can send each of the instruments and subgroups in your project. Setting up plugins on your mix bus before even start writing is one of the most controversial topics within the online mixing community. I personally don't like to affect the mix bus until the end of the mixing process, because whenever you change the volume on one of your tracks, you have to check that your compressors on the mix bus are still working at the proper level, and at some point it just gets confusing. So, as a way to finish up a mix, I would set a plugin change before sending everything to mastering. We'll take an in-depth look at this chain on the templates in action section. Why would you create a secondary master bus if you already have one? If you need to compare your mix against the reference track, that will also come out on the master bus. The reference track is going to get affected by the plugins in your master bus, making the comparison useless. Leave the reference tracks unaffected by setting up a mix bus. Reference mixes are a way to keep track of the amount of processing you are applying. By comparing your work with top-notch mixes throughout your sessions, you can avoid overcompression or harshen your overall mix with EQ. By putting a spectrum analyzer on the master bus, you can do quick checks whenever you need. This is particularly useful when filtering the low end of an instrument. Cubase provides its own spectrum analyzer on the track inspector, but I recommend using the FabFilter Pro Q2 analyzer for its precision. <laughs>